spend some time starting to look at the configurable side of what we call smart matrix pricing. So as we're talking about the, smart, the matrix pricing or the smart pricing tool inside of our writer, we've actually split it up into six different webinars. If you're watching these as, as a recorded content on our YouTube page, we had a first introduction, introduction to some of the uses of Smarty Cat at point of sale. Now we're gonna to start to talk about the concepts behind smart matrix pricing, as well as look at some of the baseline configuration pieces. We'll follow up with a couple of more webinars, actually four more, that talk about some of the different configurable aspects of smart pricing, and then finish up with one about what we call a labor matrix, or smart labor pricing inside of our writer. I'm gonna jump over into the configuration module, because that's where we're gonna spend the majority of our day as we go along through the webinar today. In the configuration module, we're gonna start underneath the configuration header, and then the primary configuration settings for what we call smart pricing are all under, underneath the parts submenu. As we get into talking about labor matrix, well, if I go down to labor, you'll notice that the second one down says smart labor pricing. However, again, as we begin our exploration of the configuration side of smart pricing, we're gonna start out with parts. There's really three different windows that work together in here in order to define smart pricing inside of our writer. It's the second, third, and fourth entries in my list, starting with set pricing method, and then default inventory and default outside purchase pricing. We're gonna focus primarily today on the set pricing method side of life. When I go ahead and bring up that window, again, I've got my set parts pricing method window and a handful of different options that we've got here. As I begin to explain this window, the first thing I like to point out are these small gray boxes that go around. And if you notice, the top section says parts and inventory, the bottom one says outside purchases, quite a few more configurable options and or really necessary options as it relates to outside purchases as opposed to the parts and inventory. Whenever I talk about smart pricing and or the disparity that you can have between parts and inventory and outside purchases, you know, I'll typically encourage folks to not price them at the same rate. What I mean by that is you know, there's really two different reasons, and again, I'm oversimplifying a bit, but two reasons you would put parts on your shelf. The first one is convenience. Much easier if I go grab that air filter off my shelf as opposed to if I have to go find it from an outside vendor, wait for it to get here and then figure out the price based upon what my cost is going to be that day. So again, the first one's going to be convenience, much more convenient for us to sell those parts. The second one is you typically get better pricing when you put parts on your shelf as opposed to when you buy them on the outside. So if I put that part on my shelf, and let's just say to make the math easy, the air filters cost me on average $5 a piece. I'm gonna mark them up four times and I'm gonna sell them for $20, or again, we'll make it $19.99. And so in theory, they're at a 75% margin, and I'm gonna put $15 in my pocket for each air filter that I sell. If I buy those same air filters on the outside, and I pay $7.50 for them, and I still mark them up four times, I'm not gonna sell for $30 a piece. It's still a 75% margin, but because of that additional cost, I'm putting $22.50 in my pocket. So again, the question becomes, well, is that a legitimate price, $30 for that outside purchase air filter? And if it is, well, then why wouldn't I sell the one that's on my shelf for the same price? Again, I'm the one that's going through the exercise of putting those on my shelf. I wanna realize the benefit of saving that $2.50 at the cost as opposed to, again, essentially lowering my profit margin on that part, my profit dollars on that part by a fairly significant factor, again, if I'm marking them up the same way. So the first thing to always note as we're looking at smart pricing or the set pricing method window is that there are different options available for outside purchases versus parts and inventory. So once we clear that hurdle, the next piece you look at is you'll see a bunch of buttons that I have an option to select. I can pick one from my parts and inventory and one from my outside purchases. And these are going to define the pricing method as to how it does the markup as we go through. There's actually three basic options. And again, so you've got 12 different buttons, but really they represent three basic options. Those are, look at the very first one, use cost plus multiplier and or in parentheses, it says CPM. Now a cost plus multiplier isn't very intelligent. And I don't mean to imply that if that's what you're using, that there's any insult intended there. No, a cost plus multiplier just says, give me a number and I'm gonna do some math. 
So you would establish one markup. So let's say we used three times as our markup. With a cost plus multiplier, doesn't matter if the part is 50 cents, $5, $50, or $500. It says I've got one number to use, and it's going to be three times. So again, that 50 cent part selling for $1.50, that $5 part, 15, that $50 part, 150, and then finally that $500 part would be 1,500. So again, there's no variance. It's just using the same number all the way along. And in my examples, you're probably actually too cheap on that 50 cent and $5 part. Um, you're probably getting a little bit too expensive in a $50 part, and certainly the $500 part, you're not likely selling for $1,500. Again, it'll certainly vary based upon your demographic, your pricing rules, your vehicles, your customers. But just as an example, a cost plus multiplier is just a flat line. It just follows along and uses the same number for each one. So a little bit smarter than that is what's called a matrix pricing. So if you notice, in my parts and inventory, we have two different options for matrix pricing, either by supplier or by department. For outside purchases, we have three different options, by supplier, by department, or what we call associated labor. A little bit more on that here in just a moment. But a matrix is a little bit more intelligent than a cost plus multiplier. Because what a matrix does is a matrix uses a range of costs. And so what I mean by that is, I have a little Word doc I threw together to hopefully illustrate this a little bit better. A traditional matrix might say from zero to five dollars, we're going to mark it up five times. From five dollars and one cent to 20, we'll mark it up four. 2001 to 50, we'll mark it up three. 50 to 100, we'll mark it up two and a half, and so on and so forth. So essentially, it's a sliding curve or a scale that goes typically high on the left, lower on the right, because again, I'm saying, well, that 50 cent part and that five dollar part, we're going to mark them both up five times. That 50 dollar part would be three times. And that $500 part would probably be somewhere in the area of about, I don't know, 1.5 to 1.75, depending on where I wanted to set it. So again, a matrix smarter than a cost plus multiplier. And then it says, we're going to do an assessment of the cost and we'll figure out what the markup should be based upon where it falls into this cost range. So again, a little bit smarter than a cost plus multiplier, what we call matrix pricing inside of the system. Now, again, there are two other buttons under parts and inventory, three other buttons in outside purchases that have this, this header that says smart matrix pricing. Smart matrix pricing takes your traditional matrix and it fixes a relatively common and or fundamental flaw. What I mean by that is if I went back and looked at my matrix, we've got zero to five, it's gonna be $5. So again, a $5 part, I'm gonna multiply five times, I'm gonna sell it for $25. A part that costs me $5.01, so it cost me a penny more, I'm going to mark it up four times, and I'm going to sell it for $20.04. So with a traditional matrix, the issue is immediately as you move from one range to the next, there is this drop in profitability. So I call it a stair-step effect. A $20 part will sell for $80, a $20.01 part will sell for $60. Well, why? Because it cost me a penny more. Should I be selling it for $20 less? There is an inherent loss in profitability based upon using what we call a traditional matrix. So again, a few versions back, it was back in the Gen 1 functionality in the mid-20s, we came up with a concept called, we originally called it linear pricing, we're now calling it smart matrix pricing. So what smart matrix pricing does is on the low side, it does still use a range. Everything from zero to $5 will mark up five times. But then as we get beyond that initial, we're going to get rid of the range. And I'm just going to say a $20 part, we're going to sell for four times. A $50 part, we're going to sell for three times. And a $100 part, we're going to sell for two and a half times. And then what it does is each time we put in a cost, it does the math. Meaning, in this case, what if I bought a part that cost me $12.50? Well, under a traditional matrix, that would have been marked up four times, it would have been sold for $50 using what we call smart pricing or smart matrix pricing, it says, well, between $5 and $20, $12.50 is halfway. So therefore, the appropriate markup for part that costs $12.50 would be four and a half times, or it works out to be $56.25 when you do the math. How about a $30 part? Well, a $30 part under the traditional matrix would have sold for four, I'm sorry, for three times because it's in that $20.01 to $50 range. So we'd sell that for 90. In this case, it says, well, that's a third of the way from here to here. So a third of the way from here to here 
want to mark that up, it's going to be 3.67 times. We do round to two characters. So again, as opposed to being $90, it'd be 110. And again, we're just offsetting for that lack of or that drop off as we go from one range to another. How about a $60 part? Well, a $60 part would have sold for two and a half times, so $150 based upon my traditional matrix. But this would say, well, let's see. A $60 part, we're going to actually mark that up. It is 20% of the way from 50 to 100. So 20% of the way from here to here is going to be 2.9 times. So again, if you worked out the math, you're looking at about $174 as opposed to 150 as we went through, make it 177. I apologize if you're checking my math. But so again, so what smart pricing does is it eliminates that stair step effect and it gives us just a smooth curve. And again, it's not that we're inflating the prices, that $5.01 part shouldn't sell for $20.04. It should sell for somewhere in the general vicinity of $25, which is where that $5 part would sell based upon my settings. Again, numbers being what they are, again, the concept is just we're going to you look at the endpoints, and we're going to figure out how far along in progression in order to determine exactly where the markup should be. So as we configure smart matrix pricing, the only question we need to know is, well, for a $20 part, how much would I sell that for? For a $50 part, how much would I sell that for? So again, we're going to just use that to find those cost points, and then we'll do the math as we fill in the gaps in between. So, all right, so three different options as far as smart pricing is concerned. Costless multiplier, matrix pricing, and then what we call smart matrix and or older versions referred to it as linear pricing. If you haven't figured it out by now, I'm a very strong advocate of using linear pricing. If you're just using a cost plus multiplier, again, that's up to you. However, if you're using matrix pricing, I'd encourage you to just go ahead and switch over to linear pricing. And what you'll find is that if you have a matrix already configured, it's going to carry that forward and convert it for us into what we call cost points. So there's no reconfiguration necessary. Very easy to switch from a matrix to a smart matrix as we go through. So there's the first caveat or the first discussion point is there's really three different ways, costless multiplier, matrix pricing, smart matrix in our writer that we can use to define the part pricing. Once we've decided, again, there are some options within. When it comes to parts and inventory, there is smart matrix pricing by supplier or smart matrix pricing by department. As we're adding parts to a ticket, as we're building records and inventory, the question is, well, do we want to assign our rules based upon who we're buying the part from, which would be by supplier, or the type of part? Is it an air filter, an oil filter, a brake rotor? So again, two different ways that we can mark it up as we get into our webinars on this Thursday, so July 19th, those that are with me live and or parts three and four of our smart pricing. We're going to talk about using supplier and or using department as ways to use our smart matrix pricing. When you get into outside purchase pricing, we've got supplier department, and then we also have what we call associated labor. Again, that'll be part five of our six part series as far as smart pricing is concerned. With outside purchases, supplier absolutely would work. We know who we're buying it from, so therefore we'll let it mark it up. Department is a difficult diligence to instill, meaning when it comes to parts and inventory, as I build a part in my master inventory, I assign it a default department, and therefore easy for me to use that as my pricing methodology. When I'm buying parts on the outside, I don't always assign it a department either as I'm sourcing the part and or sometimes until we actually go to finalize the transaction. So if you're using department for outside purchases, one of the diligences you have to instill is prior to ever discussing a transaction with a customer, you need to assign the departments to make sure that if there are variable multipliers based upon the different part types, those get applied before we actually go talk to the consumer about the price that we're intending to charge. Associated labor is kind of matrix pricing on steroids or smart matrix on steroids. And what I mean by that is, it gives us the most granularity. And what we can do with associated labor is we can tell it that, you know what, I'd like to have the job that we're going to perform actually drive the pricing. It doesn't matter if we're using Smarty Cat or we're just adding labor lines or we're adding them through catalogs or however they get added to the ticket. It says, well, let's see, I can assign a markup rule to my install brake rotors job and a different one to my install water pump or my install AC compressor. So again, you can tell the system that 
based upon the job that we're adding onto the ticket, I want different rules defined based upon the types of parts that we'll likely be using in conjunction with that job. So again, when I say on steroids, or really what I'm saying is it gives you the most granularity, the most flexibility as far as outside purchases are concerned. Again, we'll take a look at each of those individual pricing methods in a whole series of webinars that are coming up after this one here. As we continue down, you'll notice smart pricing options. So when it comes to outside purchases, because there are always these variables or these unknowns, it's asking us, well, what should I do with those outside purchases? So for example, if I'm correcting required entries during finalize, should I enable, disable, or prompt the user to accept, accept pricing changes? Essentially what I'm saying is, let's say we're using smart matrix pricing by department for my outside purchases. And I click on finalize and there's a part that doesn't have a department assigned. When we assign the department, if it determines that that should then impact the selling price to the consumer, what should it do? In my case, I'm telling it to disable smart pricing. I've at that point already established the total dollar value of the invoice, so therefore I don't need it to be changed, whether it's up or down, as we're just assigning or correcting some of the missing entries as we go through. Certainly, if you're going to utilize or want it to change, I would encourage you to prompt because then what it'll do is it will ask you, well, I'm going to change the price from $25 to $30. Do you want to do that at this point? And it gives you an option to decide as you're going through whether that's applicable or not. You'll notice the next one is grayed out. And that's because it's only applicable if you're using smart matrix pricing by associated labor. It says when cutting and pasting parts from one job to another. So I add a part to a ticket and I assign it to the job to install the water pump and it prices itself based upon the pricing rules I've associated with that job, and then I realize that, you know what, I've associated that part with the wrong job. So I wanna move it from, let's say, the water pump job to the brake job, and it says, well, now I've got a different pricing rule to assign. Should it reprice it, or should it leave the pricing where it was set originally? And again, my encouragement would be, if you're not going to have it disabled, have it prompt because then it will ask you, it will let you know that it's going to do it. If you just enable it, you'll find the price will change. And again, depending on where you were at in the process, that may or may not have been a desired impact. So I'm a fan of either disabling it, or if you'd like, go ahead and have it prompt. So that way you know that this is what's happening as you go along. Last section down here at the bottom that says, when parts and inventory are not in stock, there's an option to either use outside purchase rules or use parts and inventory. So I typically carry that air filter, and it's a 21334 air filter that I buy from Napa. It's on my shelf, and it sells for $19.99. All of a sudden, I have to go buy it on the outside one day. So should it go ahead and use the shelf price of $19.99, or should it use, based upon my settings for outside purchase, what the calculated sell price would be? In my case, I'm telling it if they're not in stock, I want to use the outside purchase rules. But oh, by the way, don't sell it less than the inventory price. So if by chance my outside purchase rules came up and said, oh, we're going to buy that from Napa, and I calculated out that we should sell it for $17.99, well, the shelf price is $19.99, so I don't ever want to sell it below what that shelf price would be. Calculate it out, and if it's greater, then use the calculated price. However, if you're adding it and it figures out that it would be theoretically less, then I want to go ahead and make sure that we're using the inventory price when it's greater than my calculated price. So again, in your price, parts pricing window, as we break it down, two sections, inventory versus outside purchase, and then three different options, cost plus multiplier, matrix pricing, and or smart matrix, and or again, in older versions, it might be referred to as linear pricing. So those are your different options as we go through. Again, we're going to spend time this coming Thursday, the 19th of July. Again, if you're with me live, looking at using supplier and using department. And then as we get into early August, we'll finish up our series of webinars about smart pricing, looking at using associated labor. And the last one we're going to talk about will be smart labor pricing.